Britannica defines literature as a body of written work. Then they also describe comics or graphic novels as texts that combine images as well. So with these two definitions in mind, it only seems that one is a bit more illustrative than the other. And perhaps, maybe, they are also in equal footing with one another. So why is it that American libraries are so reluctant to stuck comics on their racks, and even if they do, they banish it to the young adult section, even when the material is clearly catered towards the adult reader? Now, sure, it can be debated that comics tend to be a bit juvenile. However, it also cannot be denied that comics are a part of American culture. They have solidified themselves as a gateway to literacy and good reading habits. That being said, I want to ask the question, are graphic novels literature? And to answer it, I conducted a systematic research on whether or not graphic novels are a source of literature in American libraries. And this presentation is my demonstration on how I went about it. This research takes its cues from the research done by Peter MacDonald, where he examined the relationship between the graphic and the text when it comes to teaching and learning. In the research, he found out that students benefit largely because they are able to form that visual context with the provided graphics, further recommending that graphic novels and comics are viable tools for teaching and learning in classrooms. So my research seeks to answer two questions, two interrelated questions. Do students learn from comics? And if that is the case, do people want comics in American libraries? The participants for my research were 205 undergraduate students from the University of Bridgeport. Among the 41 undergraduate programs offered by the universities, the students were picked at random. Their GPAs, their race, their caste, their sex, it didn't matter. Neither did their experience with comics. All they required to be was to be fully enrolled into the university. And those who had participated in the sample survey before, uh, they weren't allowed to take part in this one. Now, the only vehicle for data collection for this research was a questionnaire consisting of three open-ended questions for qualitative responses and eight for quantitative responses. These questions function to evaluate the reading habits of the participants, their opinions towards graphic novels and comics, and the stand on having these articles in the archives of American libraries. Now, since we are talking about the questionnaire, a sample survey was conducted on 20 different undergraduate students of the same university to test the efficiency of this instrument. For this, I have taken something people know and love regardless of them being a habitual reader of comics, and that is the storyline of Superman and Batman. The storyline I picked was Injustice Year One, a series of comics published by DC Comics in anticipation of the video game of the same name. The story focuses on the classic tale of rivalry between two friends who find themselves on the opposite ends of their morality. So for the research, each of the participants were prescribed this comic with a reading period of one week. After the completion of the reading period, all of the participants were gathered together, the comics were retrieved back, they were prescribed with the questionnaires, and were given an hour to complete. After that, the questionnaires were retrieved back, and the participants were sent off with gratitude. The collected data is observed from the perspective of the immediate recall protocol, which avoids the woes of interrelatedness. Interrelatedness refers to the manner in which key informations are repeated in the research instruments to give linguistic cues. For instance, if I keep saying the word yellow, you might be able to anticipate that my next word will be yellow. And as a researcher, I do not want that. I want you to think about the thing that has been given to you at that moment, not before, not after. 
So, as comics and graphic novels are a visual and a textual medium, the study examines the comprehension of the visual information juxtaposed with the linguistic information. So, in this manner, IRPs are employed to gauge the comprehension after the text has been read in whole, in this case, a comic. Additionally, what is cool about IRPs is that qualitative responses can be assigned a numeric value, typically ranging from 1 to 4, 1 being the least significant and 4 being the most. Now, of course, this does take away the essence of detail qualitative answers have. However, it does act as a converter and it makes analysis of such responses way easier. And with that, I hope I have clarified the methods I have employed in my research and established myself as systematic and scientific, well, as much as I can be. I thank you for your time and I hope everyone is taking care of themselves in these trying times. This has been Nirvik, you have been awesome, have a good one.